All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for checking the video out today. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover. So before we get into these topics, do me a big favor. If you do end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. Now, the first topic I want to discuss briefly has to do with Tom Henderson commenting on the recent report about God of War Ragnarok releasing in November. So we have Jason Schreier, who was the one who reported on God of War Ragnarok being set for a November release date, being quote tweeted by Tom Henderson, where he says, God of War announcement later this month. This is consistent with some other important announcements from Sony during the last week of this month. So there's a possible state of play inbound hoping to get those details soon. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because Tom Henderson is saying, look, on top of getting the God of War release date at the end of this month, Sony has other important announcements to make. And this has led to quite a bit of speculation. I mean, he's even speculating that maybe they're going to have a state of play before the end of the month. I think if Sony were to do a state of play before the end of the month, it would be dedicated to God of War. Um, if it's not that, I mean, some people are thinking maybe it is going to be a showcase after all. I would caution everybody in that line of thinking. I don't know that that's necessarily what Sony's going to do. I think that the way most people are viewing it is Sony did their June 2nd state of play, and that's pretty much all we're going to get for June. You know, maybe we could get the release date for God of War. But, you know, I do find this interesting. Tom Henderson is one of the most reliable insiders and leakers across the entire gaming industry. And when he says that Sony has other important announcements to make at the end of this month, or as he says, during the last week of this month, you know, that's something I can't help but pay attention to and wonder what exactly are these announcements going to be. So, you know, I'll leave it to you guys. You let me know down in the comments below. What do you think Sony could be planning for the end of this month? I'll definitely be interested to see what you have to say. Moving to the next topic, we're talking about The Last of Us Part 1 or The Last of Us Remake. Reading here from WCCF Tech, it says a new Last of Us Part 1 comparison video has been shared online showcasing some of the improvements featured in the upcoming remake. The video, which has been put together by El Analista de Bits, highlights the facial animations and lighting improvements, as well as some of the changes made to the infected and more. Interestingly enough, it looks like animations in general are very similar to those of the original with only a few tweaks. And I wanted to talk about this for just a moment here because this is something that a lot of people are talking about. There's a lot of back and forth happening right now where some people are saying that they're not seeing any difference at all with this Last of Us Part 1 remake. Um, some people are, I think, saying that it just looks the same. And I think that's a little bit disingenuous. I say this because after looking at these comparisons and these videos and kind of seeing them put side by side, in my opinion, it's a pretty substantial difference. I'm not saying you need to like the difference. I think that there are some people who don't like some of the changes that Naughty Dog has made with this, and I think that's totally fair. A lot of people are saying that The Last of Us Remastered on PS4 looked so good already, it didn't really need a remake, they didn't have to do all this to it and i can agree with that as well the last of us remastered on ps4 holds up amazingly well it was always a great looking game and still looks great but i think to make it sound like there aren't any substantial differences here is again disingenuous and um even as somebody who you know i think that sony is you know charging a little too much here for this remake um you know 70 bucks it's it's a tough pill to swallow in my opinion I can't deny that the game looks great. Like graphically speaking, what they're doing with The Last of Us Part 1, it looks phenomenal. You can tell it's a major upgrade. And I think that the differences do look pretty good based off of everything I've seen so far. And I think that it just gives like a, a almost like a different feeling to the game in general, like a more grounded feeling. I mean, that's the thing that I always liked about The Last of Us is how grounded it was. But I feel like some of the art style changes that they're making, I think, will just kind of help to to improve that tone even more. That's just my opinion based off of what I've seen. But, you know, you guys let me know your thoughts about that. What do you think about the differences you're seeing between The Last of Us Part 1 compared to The Last of Us Remastered on PS4? Uh, continuing to talk about the universe of The Last of Us, I want to talk about 
the upcoming multiplayer game. So reading here from PlayStation Lifestyle, they say the much promised multiplayer game for The Last of Us made its debut at Summer Game Fest, only it's quite different from what the team first intended. Thanks to the team's huge ambitions, the game now has a story, brand new characters, and promises to be as big as any of these single player games Naughty Dog has done before, and in some ways, bigger. The team wasn't quite ready to unveil the game properly, but they did explain the way the story is told is very unique to the game. There will be a brand new cast of characters, and it takes place in another part of the United States that looks suspiciously like San Francisco. Continues by saying, we can finally announce that we're creating something much larger than a mode, Naughty Dog said, referring to the original factions. The studio claims that the game is an extremely ambitious undertaking. We're growing our studio significantly to ensure we build this full-scale, standalone game with its massive scope and immense world in a way that fans have come to expect from The Last of Us and Naughty Dog. Uh, we aim to make our newest entry into multiplayer inviting to new players while still a thrilling challenge for more of our seasoned fans. Most of us figured out a while ago that the Last of Us multiplayer game has probably gone well beyond a factions mode at this point. There's some speculation that Naughty Dog is working on a battle royale, but there's no indication that this is the case. What we can say, however, is that the Last of Us multiplayer is all about Sony's new push into live service. Journalist and insider Jeff Grubb said as much recently when he claimed that the Last of Us multiplayer will be, quote, very, very live servicey. Uh, they're building all the services in so they can like swap in huge parts of it in and out he added like that's what they've been working on and trying to make bigger and bigger and more ambitious end quote and you know to me this is fair all of this is fairly obvious at this point right i mean i feel like you don't necessarily need somebody like jeff grubb to kind of confirm this but it's something that makes sense at this point in time i've tried to tell people for a while that what Naughty Dog is doing with this Last of Us online game or this Last of Us multiplayer game is going to be possibly the biggest thing they've ever done. And I, I think it's going to shock people. I do. And the fact that they are making this something that they're calling standalone and they're saying in some ways it could be even bigger than what they've achieved with some of their, you know, AAA single player games. This is what I think people need to pay attention to. We are... We are looking at something massive with this Last of Us Online game. And I know that, you know, people are always going to be a little bit disappointed where it's like, well, you know, we want a new game from Naughty Dog. And the good news is Neil Druckmann did confirm that they are working on a, another game uh, that is likely not multiplayer. He didn't give any details, but it's, it's likely a new single player game that Naughty Dog is working on next to this. So, you know, for anybody who's worried about that, I told you it's not something you need to worry about. It's not like Naughty Dog's just going to be converted into a multiplayer only studio. Absolutely not the case, but they do want this to succeed. They do want it to be bigger than anybody was expecting. And something I do want to point out is they do talk about there being a story. They do talk about there being all new characters. And I think this is very, very important to pay attention to because this is, this is essentially going to be like, what I said, an, uh, Last of Us MMO Lite, that's pretty much what we're looking at here, you know, and um, it makes sense why it would take so long for them to kind of build this out and flesh it out, and I'm very excited. I'm very, very excited to see more of this game. I hope it lives up to my expectations, and so I just wanted to give you guys this update and talk more about it because we kind of skimmed over it after, you know, seeing it live at Summer Game Fest, and so I'll definitely be interested to get your thoughts down below but the final topic i have for you talks about square enix and final fantasy 7 remake part 2 and how it might appear during the final fantasy 7 25th anniversary stream uh, it says here that square enix has announced a final fantasy 7 25th anniversary celebration broadcast which may include a teaser for final fantasy 7 remake part 2 expectations for news on this remake should be tempered considering that the presentation will only be 10 minutes long but there's not much else that would cap off a milestone anniversary quite like this. Now, they make it clear that the celebration is going to be short but sweet. They say we will be streaming Final Fantasy VII 25th anniversary celebration at only around 10 minutes long. It will be short and sweet, but we have packed in lots of information. So I hope everyone can look forward to the unveiling. So, yeah, this is something we might want to pay attention to. I'm going to... I'm going to say 
we probably shouldn't expect Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two to show up here. I I just say that because I feel like you know showing something like that in a ten minute stream. Um, I, I just don't see it happening. But you know, there's a possibility. Uh, we've been hearing that maybe Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to uh, be announced for Xbox, which I mean, it's been long enough, right? You you would assume that that would be a thing that would happen, but we could see that at the Xbox Showcase. But you know, nonetheless, this is just something I think that any Final Fantasy fan, especially you know those who are looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two, you might want to tune into this. Um, I would say go in with your expectations being 50-50. 50% chance they might tease it and mention it. 50% chance they won't talk about it at all. So there you go. That's the latest Final Fantasy update I have for you guys. But that's going to do it for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, if you did, be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon. And feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.